Hey everybody, welcome. This is Jesse Krieger here with Jeremy Ryan Slate, author of Unremarkable to Extraordinary. How you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing great, man. Always, always awesome to hang out with you. Absolutely. And you're looking uh, happy and tan. I know you've been traveling, getting the word out and really want to get um, your perspective on, you know, this book that you've got coming out. And depending on when you're watching this, it may already be out, but maybe you can introduce us to Unremarkable to Extraordinary and this amazing book you put together. You know, I, I, the, the thinking behind it is that I feel like there's so much bad information out there on like what it takes to be successful. Right. And online marketing is like totally ruined people about this, you know, just buy this course, just buy this product, just read this book and you're going to, you're going to find success. So what I really wanted to do is I started this podcast back in 2015 and really one of the motivations behind it was that I wanted to write a book, but it was, it took a long time to get there. It took almost seven years of research and interviews and things like that to get there to really find out what success looks like. You know, there's tried and true things that people that have created amazing levels of success have done. So I really wanted to distill that down into something that everybody could do, you know, kind of break all the bad information out there, knock out all the, the, um, you know, the lies out there in terms of what success looks like. And I wanted to give people real repeatable strategies that every single person can apply to really create their version of extraordinary, right? Because it's different for every single person, you know, like what you may feel is extraordinary is different than somebody else's version. So there's a blueprint that you can actually apply based on this book that can really help you achieve a lot of those things. Yeah. And you really have um, interviewed and talked to some amazing people, some extraordinary people from world-class athletes to multimillionaire business owners to the former director of the CIA and like everything in between. And so, you know, what are some of those common threads that you've teased out from all of these conversations, people from all walks of life that really underscore what it means to be extraordinary and lead an extraordinary life? Well, the first thing is just really the viewpoint, because I feel like one of the major things that happens to us in life is adversity, right? Bad things happen, good things happen, right? But it's how you approach those things. That's a major difference on how you're going to be successful in life. So the people that are extraordinary, they look at adversity as this thing to help them become the person that they want to become. And when you approach it that way, you're going to look at it for what can I learn from this? What can I get out of this? What benefit is there to this? Because it's always there, but there's so many people in life that say, you know, this happened to me, poor me. How could this ever happen to me? When somebody that's extraordinary says, okay, I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to feel a little bit bad initially. And then I'm going to game plan on how I'm going to use this and what I can get out of this. So adversity really is something that helps them to reach their next level. Another really incredible thing is they've gotten good at not caring what other people think, but not in the sense that a lot of social media influencers want you to think, where you're kind of a jerk or you're pushing other people off or whatever it is. They've realized that they don't have to care what other people think, but at the same time, they have to treat people in such a way that they don't upset them while they're doing those other things because you can ruin some relationships, you can upset some people, and you can create some real enemies on your road to success. So if you're really focusing on things like that, as well as, you know, not dwelling on your failures and always seeing how you can win from a failure, you know, there's so much you can get out of that. I think that's great advice. And like, you know, it really hits home to be, be yourself, be unique, not care what other people think, but not be purposefully aggressive or not yes. shove it in someone's face. Cause who, who likes that kind of a person, right? Well, and you're creating an enemy too, right? Like you can be creating a barrier on your path to success rather than somebody says, you know what? I wouldn't do it that way, but man, look what Jesse's doing and it's great. And, you know, I like what he's doing. Wouldn't do it that way, but he's doing great rather than creating an enemy for yourself. Well said. And you know, a little preview into some of what people will learn when you get a copy of Unremarkable to Extraordinary. One of the things I'd love to dive into you with is you have a chapter called Don't Follow Your Passion, which is kind of counterintuitive to a lot of the advice out there about follow your passion, you know, and so forth. So what do you mean by that when you say don't? follow your passion? Well, I, I think there's a lot of bad advice out there around this. And I think one of the biggest things is the advice where people say, well, don't do things you don't like to do. Well, if you want to be successful, sometimes you're going to be cleaning floors. Maybe you're not good at hiring. You're still going to have to hire people. There's a lot of things in your business, especially early on, that you're going to have to do in order to create success, whether it's a business, whether it's um, a passion project, whatever it may be, there's going to be things involved that you don't want to do. 
And you need to be good at those things so that you can create success. But this is also inspired by a book that I read a number of years ago by Cal Newport called So Good They Can't Ignore You. And Cal talks about the concept of finding something you're good at and continue to focus on that thing and focus on that thing and focus on that thing. And you get to what I like to call the no effort zone. And in the no effort zone, you've gotten so good at it, doing it is effortless. So now you can create some really incredible success about that and you become passionate about it. But maybe you're not passionate on day one. So you have to find something you're good at and continue to hammer that home and get really, really good at that. And you're going to find yourself being very, very passionate about that thing. Like, you, you know, you can see people that do different jobs in life, whether it's, you know, building race cars or picking up the garbage, right? If you get really good at that thing and you start to find the things you can like about that thing, you're going to find passion in that thing. And isn't it also true that as you get good and focus on a specific skill set, that's what attracts other people and presents new opportunities Correct. instead of just coming from the place of, oh, I love to do this, so I'm going to do it. And I don't care what other people think is kind of like well, the opposite of what we've been talking about. Because at, at the same time, like the things you like to do, as much as this stinks, it's the real world. The things you like to do should create income or should create opportunities. If they don't, it's great, but you have a hobby. And I think if you really have a passion, if you really have something you like to do and you want to be your passion, it needs to produce income and it needs to produce opportunities. You know, you may love knitting, right? But knitting may never be that nine figure business that you have a desire to create. So it has to be something you enjoy doing that can produce revenue and produce opportunities as well. I love that. And it leads into one of the other points that you have in the book. There's a chapter called create your own opportunities. And how do you connect those two or what's the through line between, you know, not following your passion, but focusing on what you're good at and how to create your own opportunities as a result? Well, I, I think people look at life through the viewpoint of like life just happened to me and, and here I am. When somebody is looking at it from an extraordinary viewpoint, it's the simplest thing. Like the, the example I think of is I had interviewed an entrepreneur once in my podcast and he was actually just in a lunch line. And he's like, man, they are losing so much money here in this lunch line. So when somebody can create their own opportunities, they can look at that and they say, I would do this different. I would do that different. I do this different. You know what? I'm going to buy this business and do those things. So they can look at something for lost revenue. They can look at something for lost motion. They can look at something for saying, if I can just tweak this one thing, I can create some incredible opportunities. So they're not looking at it for, man, this line is so darn long, man. I hate waiting in this line. They're looking at it for, you know what? There's a huge opportunity here and I'm going to create something with it. They're not waiting for life to happen to them. They're looking for things they can actually do and create. And, you know, it may be, you know, calling extra publishers to get a book deal. It may be, you know, putting yourself in the right position to get a business partner that you know that their relationships are going to get you where you want to be. But you have to be able to create the opportunities for yourself to create the things you want to create in life because life doesn't happen to you. It happens because of you. I love it. And this is just a sneak peek of all the amazing content, all the great stories and all the strategies that you've presented in, in this book. So depending on when you're watching this, it's either about to come out or it's already available. So make sure to pick up your copy of Unremarkable to Extraordinary. And Jeremy, any final thoughts or an encouragement to somebody who's listening to this and on the fence and get them off the fence and get this book onto their shelf? What I would say is you know, whether you've had success young in life or whether you've had success old in life, I've talked to people that have had it in every walk of life, every age of life. If you want to create something so bad, this book has the information that you need to know how to put all those things together so you can create your level of extraordinary. Boom. Couldn't have said it better than that. So everybody pick up a copy of the book. This is Jeremy Ryan Slate, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.